Hey everyone, welcome back to Widget Wisdom. Today we are going to dive into a popular Flutter state management solution, GetX. In this video, we will walk through everything from the basics of GetX to advanced feature like reactive state management and navigation. We will also cover how to manage dependencies, show practical code example and demonstrate why GetX is so efficient. So get ready for a comprehensive session on mastering GetX state management in Flutter. So first thing first, what is GetX? So GetX is a lightweight, high performance state management package for Flutter that simplifies state management, dependency injection and route management. Unlike other state management tools, GetX is known for its minimal boilerplate and reactive programming approach. So let's understand the GetX by a simple example. So for that, open your IDE, then come to the pubspec.yaml file and here add this get package. Okay, now after adding that, tap onto this pub get option to get all the dependencies. Now let's first see how we can create a counter application using the getx state management. So in getx, we use controllers for business logic and handling state changes. Okay, so come to the lib directory and here create a new dart file as counter controller. Then come inside this file and here first create a class as counter controller. Then this class will extend the getx controller. So here at the getx controller and then import this. Basically getx controller is a class provided by the getx package and this helps in managing the state of application and providing lifecycle methods like on init and on close. By extending getx controller, uh, this counter controller can manage reactive variables and update the UI when the state changes. Okay. Now come inside this class and here create a new variable as count and initialize its value with the zero. Okay. Then here add the OBS. So you now may ask that what is this OBS thing? So this OBS makes our count variable as observable variable and in getx observable variable can be tracked by the framework which allow the UI to automatically update when the value changes. And when you mark a variable as OBS, you can use getx reactive widgets like obx to listen for changes to this variable and update the ui accordingly okay so this was the obs part now come below this variable and here create a new method as void increment then we will use this function to increment our counter value then come inside this function and here just add the count plus plus so whenever this function will get called we will increment the count value by the one now come to the main.dart file and from here remove this my home page and here create a new stateless widget as the counter app. Now here I will show you how you can update the state using the stateless widget when you are using the getx package. Okay. So here come inside the build method and here we need to put the controller in the widget tree so that we can access the controller inside this counter app. So for that here create the final variable as counter controller and name this as controller then here add the get dot put and then counter controller so here this get dot put is a function which is provided by the getx and this is used for dependency injection in flutter and it allows you to create and inject a controller or any other class into widget tree making it accessible for anywhere in your app without needing to pass it around manually so basically here we just registers the counter controller instance then come inside this return statement and from here return a scaffold widget then add the app bar property and here add the app bar widget and for title just say a text widget and add the getx example now here add the body property and then here add the center widget then for its child here simply add the obx widget so this obx widget will observe the changes in the observable variable like here we created this count as observable variable and whenever this count value will change this obx will detect this value and it will update the value inside this widget so that's why we use obx widget when we are using getx okay now here add a function uh, here you can add a curly braces then return a text widget or here simply you can use this arrow function okay then here add the text widget and then here we will show the counter so here just add the counter now for getting the counter value here you just need to call this controller and then access the count value of this controller 
so here at the controller then dot count then for style here at the style property and then add the text style widget and add the font size as 24 and i guess that's it for this style part then here at the floating action button then add the floating action button widget now for its on pressed method just add the controller dot increment so this increment function will increment the count value then that value will be updated inside this text widget okay now for its child here just simply add the add icon now if you save the code and run the application then you can see whenever i'm pressing onto this floating action button then our count value is getting incremented so that was the basic implementation of getx now let's recap what we have learned so far so here we have defined a simple counter controller with an observable integer that is count and the obs makes the variable reactive meaning any changes will automatically update the ui then inside to the ui part here we have used obx widget to automatically update the counter whenever the value changes and the get dot put method creates and provides the controller to the widget tree so that's it now let's explore dependency management in getx with getx we can handle our dependencies cleanly and efficiently whether we are injecting services or controller so let's understand this dependency injection by a simple example so for that come to the lib directory and here create a new dart file as api service then come inside this file and here create a class as api service so in your application you can implement a api here but i'm not going to implement any api i'll just simply add the future delay to demonstrate that how api will work with getx now this class is not going to extend getx controller rather than it will extend the getx service now you may ask that what is this getx service now so getx service is a special class in the getx package and it is used for defining services that have a longer life cycle than ordinary controllers and uh, services in getx are ideal for handling things like api calls user sessions or databases or any kind of global operation that needs to stay in memory throughout the app's life cycle okay and here you can also use the getx controller but to, i'm not using getx controller here because getx controller is typically tied to specific parts of the ui and it may get destroyed with the widget and reason for here using getx service is that service is meant to live longer and is not automatically disposed of when the ui changes okay now come inside this class and here first add a future method and then here add its return type add string then name this function as fetch data and this is a future function so you know that here we need to add the async here so please add the async here then inside the curly braces here just add a delay of two seconds so for that here add the await then future dot delayed and then inside it here at the duration of two second now after two second here we are going to return a string so let's return a data from the api now let me quickly explain you the whole code so here the api service is a class that extends getx service meaning it can be used as a service in your app with the longer life cycle managed by getx then we have this fetch data method and this method simulates an api request using future dot delay to wait for two seconds mimicking a delay you have experienced when fetching data from an external source like http api then here we have two second delay and the function returns a string which represents the fetch data so this method would be called asynchronously in your app to get the data and because it returns a future you have to use await or then method when calling it to handle the response properly then let's see how we can use this service class so for that come to the main function and here before this run app here add the get then dot lazy put then the type of object in our case the type is api service so here add the api service so this registers the api service as a dependency in the getx system that means getx will manage the life cycle of api service and make it accessible throughout your app 
and this type API service indicate that we are registering the API service class and getx will store the instance for us. Then here add the anonymous function or let's say lambda function that returns a new instance of API service. When getx needs the API service for the first time, it will call this function to create the instance. And this function ensures that API service is only created when it is accessed for the first time, saving memory and resources if it is not needed. Now let's also talk about the lazy initialization. So lazy initialization means that the object, in our case, its API service, is not created immediately when the app starts or when the lazy put method is called. Instead, it is created only when the service is requested for the first time using get.find elsewhere in the app. So this is useful for services or objects that are not required immediately but need to be ready when necessary. So basically lazy initialization means that it will not create the instance immediately when the app going to start. Rather than it will create the instance only when when it is required or when you are using get.find first time in your application. Then we have this new thing that is lazy put. So we use lazy put for efficient resource uses because instead of creating all services or controllers at the start of application, lazy put ensures that they are initialized only when used and they have this on demand initialization thing that this will create the instance when it is required or when you are calling manually. Now let's build the UI for this. So come above here. Why you will come above? So go down below and here create a new stateless widget as home page. Then come inside the build method and here we need to fetch the API service. So for that here simply add the final API service. Then also name this variable as API service and then here add the get.find. So this get.find will find that lazy put initialization of our API service and it will create the instance when we will calling this get.find. Now come inside this return statement and from here return a scaffold widget. Then for app bar add the app bar widget with title as getx dependency management. Then for body add a center widget and for its child here add the future builder and also mention the return type which is string so here add that then for future here add the api service dot fetch data so as you remember our this fetch data method is the future method then for builder here add the context and snapshot then here add the check that if connection state is waiting then we will show a circular progress indicator and snapshot is having data then we will show the data otherwise we will show the error okay then one more thing don't forget to call this home page from the my app so now if you save the code and run the application then you can see after two seconds of loading we have the string message so this is how you can manage the dependency injections with getx now let's see how we can navigate between screens using getx so if you are not sure then getx is also provide the navigation thing so for that let's quickly create a new stateless widget as next page and come inside the build method and from here return a scaffold and for app bar add the text as next page and for body here add a center widget which will have a text widget and that will say welcome to the next page and for style here add the font size as 24. now come to the home page and here add the floating action button then here add the floating action button widget and for child here add the arrow forward icon now for on pressed here simply add the get then to the next page so this will navigate us to second page without the context now let's save the code and run the application to test this out now as you can see when i'm pressing onto this floating action button then i'm redirected to the next page without a build context so here is the thing now if you replicate to same behavior in your application then you will face an error because here at the parent you are using material app but when we are using getx package instead of material app here we need to use the get material app so please try to replace material app with get material app and 
it will work for you so this is how you can navigate between screens using getx now let's see how we can work with the reactive state management so for that come to the lib directory and here create a new dart file as reactive controller then come inside this file and here create a new class as reactive controller then this class will going to extend the getx controller and you know why it is going to extend the getx controller then inside it create a new variable as name and the name is going to be in string format so here add the empty string then add the dot obs so this will is going to be observable variable then here create a new method as void change name and this method will going to take a single parameter that is the name so here add the string parameter as new name then inside the curly braces here just simply update the name variable by the new name so here add name then dot value then new name okay now come inside the main dot dart file and here create a new class as name page that will going to extend the stateless widget then come inside the build method and here create the instance of this reactive controller by using the get dot put method then from here return a scaffold widget which will have a app bar and for app bar add a text widget which will say get x reactive state then for body add a center widget and for its child add a column widget then sets the main axis alignment to center then for children here first add a obx widget because we are going to observe the entered name by the user so here add the obx then it will return a text widget so add that and then here mention name and for getting the name add the controller dot name so this will get the current name entered by the user then for style add the text style widget and set the font size to 24 then after this again add a text field then for its own changed method just call the controller dot change name so this will update the name then for decoration uh, add the input decoration and add the label text as enter your name okay so whenever user will enter anything onto this text field then our controllers change name method will update the name variable which we have created inside this reactive controller and that updated name will be updated by this text widget and i know it's not making sense to you now for making it sense just save the code and run the application and now you can see whenever i'm entering anything onto this text field the value is simultaneously getting updated inside this text widget so this text field modifies the name variable and obx update the ui when the value changes so that's it for the getx tutorial and i think i have covered almost all the things which are required for starting you out now if you like this video then please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to widget wisdom and you can also support us on patreon or you can join the youtube membership to support this channel thank you and i'll see you in the next one